Today we pick up our Bible study in Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 33. In Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 33, quoting from the New King James Version, Jesus teaches his disciples that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. The Bible adds the words, he spoke this word openly. Mark chapter 8, verse 32, and is an important note as this lets us know that there were no indicators that should lead us to believe that it was not understood by his disciples. However, most likely not perceived in the proper way as his disciples did not fully understand this from a heavenly standpoint. We must keep in mind that Jesus' disciples did not have the Bible or what we call the New Testament, but were living in it and were a part of these lessons that we can learn from today. It must have been hard for them to wrap their minds around all the miracles and teachings that Jesus brought to them as many, if not most, of the teachings of Jesus were against the traditions that they had been utilizing and seeking to prove themselves worthy to God for so many years. But the suffering and rejection that Jesus speaks of is one of the key points of the reason Jesus came to live with us, so he could experience the trials and tribulations that we go through each day, and then be the sacrifice that pays the penalty for all of them. Jesus teaches us in John chapter 15, verses 18 through 25, and quoting from John chapter 15, verse 20, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Jesus was being the example and giving insight as to why we continue to experience persecution, trial, and tribulation as Christians. We do not like to admit or experience these types of situations, nor did the disciples of Jesus as Peter pulled Jesus aside and rebuked him for saying such a thing as we learn in Mark chapter 8, verse 32. But Jesus, in reply mostly to the devil for blinding Peter to the truth, rebuked Peter for saying these things that he did not fully understand and that were against the will of God for the purpose of Jesus being in this world. This is an example and promise that even as we walk with Jesus, we have a tendency to pursue the things that are most important to us rather than God's will for us. We all have our own ideas of who God is and who we want him to be in our lives. The thing that we want or need God to help us with, the things that we expect God, for do, expect God to do for us in growing in our relationships with him. But we must all be reminded, as was Peter, that God is in control. We are not. And it is God's will for our lives that we must continually be reminded that we are to seek over and above our own will and desires. Jesus teaches us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 32b through 33, For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Dear Lord, we want and we strive to seek and to follow your will for our lives. But the evils of this world also strive to block our pathway to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Please help us to put and keep our focus on you and your will for our lives so that we may be the people that you desire us to be in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.